This is Algebra 1, Lesson 13, Equations of Functions. The first thing we'll do is do our Google Slides with Equations of Functions and then a graspable math activity. Next will be a Desmos activity in Picture Perfect. And then last, we'll do an open middle exercise, Equivalent Equations. So our first activity is in slides and students are given a function d of t. They're given a description about what this function represents. The d is the distance in miles and the t is the time in hours. And then they're asked to write a paragraph explaining what might be going on in this scenario. They should pay attention to the t minus 4, the 70, the 4, and the 8. Uh, they should talk about as many things as they notice uh, and, and put in detail. So the first time I give a paragraph like this, I don't typically get many paragraphs. I usually just get a phrase and not even a sentence. So um, I would encourage, encourage, encourage <laughs> students to write more and more information. Uh, and you may give them some time independently, quietly for a few minutes to get them started and then come around and start asking for people to share their ideas. And as they do that, hopefully kids that were having trouble coming up with some things to say can add more detail to their paragraph. They should not take off what they've written, but they could add to. And then I ask them what this domain reveals in this context. As always, the full descriptions of what's going on in this function will be in the teacher notes. The next screen has to do with using two different methods to solve an equation. And the students will type in the order of operations or, well, it's not order, it's inverse operations and properties that are being used to solve the equation. They should be familiar with the term distributive property and they should be familiar with inverse operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and so forth. And so they should use those types of words to describe what is happening in method one and method two. And they will just type that in. They don't have to type sentences, but just, you know, a list of words is fine. And then finally, what did those numbers 140 and 6 reveal in the scenario that they wrote about on the previous slide? Then we move on to another context. This time we have a Ronnie charging $32 plus an additional amount for candy bars in a gift box. And so in this case, I'm asking them to tell me what does that X minus 1 telling you? So I'm not going to tell them. I want them to see if they can come up with an explanation for that uh, particular expression X minus 1 in the equation. What is it revealing? And then what is a reasonable domain for this situation? What kind of numbers would you put in here? to represent the number, the x variable. And then I would ask them to create a Desmos graph. Now this is the first time I have not given them an actual link out to anything. They will need to go to desmos.com, click the button, and go into their graph and create their graph all by themselves. Uh, so this goes back to discrete continuous. I'm not going to discuss which one this is because that information will be in the teacher notes. Uh, but they will need to create a graph that makes sense in this context. So notice it says in this context. And then finally, once again, they're solving, uh, or it's actually been solved for them. They're not having to solve, but they're having to describe the method, like step by step, what is being done. So they could list the operations, the or that are being used and the properties that are being used. Now something I'm trying to do, if you haven't already figured it out, is to break them of the habit of always distributing first because they are, it's ingrained and they are usually pretty good at it. And But I don't want them to do that first, <laughs> at least not all the time, uh, because later in the course we're going to get into quadratics and the quadratics are going to be multiplied like a binomial squared will be multiplied by some number. And if they distribute, of course, it is incorrect. They are not able to do that. And so we're going to kind of start the process now of getting them used to the idea that that's not an absolute necessity when they see parentheses. Using the distributive property is one way, but it's certainly not the only way to do this problem. The next thing we're going to do is a graspable math activity. This activity has a variety of tasks and there are exactly 12 different screens that they will go to. The first one is a hotspot. 
And if you've never done this, you take this blue dot, and let's just say the error was right here, which obviously that's not true. Uh, they would still have to type something in this blank to say what they did. So let's say first you would rewrite the equation. I'm just making something up here. And then you would click check. Now if it's wrong, the button that you placed will turn red. And then they have the option of moving it, but notice it leaves behind that little red dot there. So you can see that's where you placed it the first time and that was incorrect. So you can actually keep track of the errors that they're making. And then they would move it to another spot and say whatever. And then they will have to write something or maybe they'll leave the writing in the same. Maybe they just misplaced it. Uh, the next hotspot is the same. And you may notice I'm doing the same strategy that I was trying to encourage them to do on the slides, which is to divide instead of distribute uh, when they get to that step. In this case, you're dividing by a fraction instead of dividing by one third. You could also multiply. So that's a hint. And then here, I'm asking them a reasonable first step. Well, clearly they could distribute, but they don't have to distribute. There's another option here. And the same for number four. Yes, they could distribute, but they don't have to. Uh, these also have time limits of five seconds because I know you don't have kids that do this, but I have kids that just click through without even reading the question. So I do put in a very small time limit just to prevent that. Uh, I'd have a little longer one on the longer problems. On the goal state problems, you're actually rearranging these. Now again, they can distribute or not. So I could distribute, but I could also divide. Uh, so as they're doing these, rem you might want to have kids come up and demonstrate. Uh, or I, th I think you can display it for the class. I'm not sure about that. They used to make that an option. Not sure if it still is. Now notice how this is backwards and you're trying to get it to go this direction. Here's how you fix that problem. Grab the variable X and put it right on top of the other side and that blue bar will pop up and when you let go it reverses sides. So I know that frustrated me. Uh, they used to tap on the equal sign to reverse it and they've changed the technology a little bit and that's how you fix it. And then you'll click continue. All right, now the canvases, are you have to actually get in here and grade these. So uh, when you do this problem, it says drag the X into the parentheses. There's a lot of text here. You might want to do this as a whole class if they've not done it before. I think we had this on one other activity where they grab the X and put it in the parentheses and then it just replaces the X with that number 3.5. And then you would simplify this. And when you do, then you're going to answer this question. What does the value of X, the 3.5, and that simplified result, 312.5, mean in this context? And the context is right here. I put it right next to the problem, but also up here in the directions. What does this mean? So they have to type a sentence or two in this space. They will not be able to submit until they type something. So that's how you would go in and check their work is when you look at it, you could read their explanations and see if they got it or not. Now, if they do just nonsense, so let's just put nonsense in here just to show you. Anything they type is going to let them submit and it will turn it green on the task on the task pane that you see for the kids. We'll see a green dot and you'll see that they did a green dot too, but it doesn't mean it's right. See, the check mark means it is correct and it's finished. The green means you finished, but the teacher is going to check it to determine if it's correct. Uh, when you get to number eight, you'll notice the difference here is you have an F of X. So you're going to take this F. Don't grab the X. If you do that, it'll pull it out. We don't want to do that. Grab the F and then you can pull the whole thing on top of this. And then you can solve this equation as usual. And then when you get your solution, you would come down here and explain what that value of x, which is 2 in this case, and this value f of x, which is 200, what do those mean in this context? And so they need to read the scenario. It's the same one. Uh, they can move this stuff around. I don't know if you noticed, but if you hover, you can actually move this around. So if you want to do that, you can. 
not necessary, but uh, just something nice to know. Again, if they don't type here, they can't submit, so they got to do that. And then this is just another example going in both directions. So one gives you the value of x, and one gives you the value f of x. And then you have a scenario, so they need to describe what those mean. And then finally, we have a function, and all they're doing is putting it in the slope intercept form to look like the goal. So here's the point. I call this the transformation form, where you can go right three up five and make it twice as steep and inverted or you can put it in slope intercept form, which the kids know better. Uh, and then same thing here, <clears throat> except on this one, you'll notice the goal state is missing. So they don't know what it looks like. They just have to uh, follow it. The thing about f of x is you really don't want to put anything on the left side at all. And that's something you might want to point out at this point. All right, I would spend significant time on that part of the assignment because honestly, that is the heart of the assignment. The next part of the assignment is Picture Perfect, which is a Desmos activity. So here is the Desmos activity, and it is rather lengthy, and it is, it is challenging as you get towards the end of the activity. And I have cut this short. I think most years that I teach this, I've done maybe three-fourths of it, but not all of it. Uh, and it, it does say 45 to 60 minutes, so it's a full class activity if you do all the screens. So my suggestion is if you're running low on time, just cut some of the end of this out and you'll see what I mean. Okay, down here you can see that there are 18 different screens for them to work with. Now the most of this is helping them build their intuition, uh, but you can't really skip them because it really does matter and and what they're doing is they're placing these on the wall evenly spaced well if you're just eyeballing it you might get it right the first try some kids will but most kids are going to not get it right the first try because what happens is it's easy to place the first two but the third one you have to place it so that it's spaced exactly the same distance away and so they will do it again and again and again until they get it now, if they're stuck and they don't get it eventually, you may have to use pacing to kind of force them to move on because some of them will get completely frustrated with that if they can't get it to work. So I'm going to go ahead and try that and see how good my eyeballs are. Oh, I did almost all of them, but the last one's slightly off. They click here to reset. They try again. And then on this next screen, it tells you your classmates. Uh, nobody did it on the first try. <laughs> Let's find a better way. So what you're doing is you're building the need for multiple representations. So the first thing we did was nothing. We didn't have any measurements at all, but now we have a measurement. We know the width of the wall is 12, and we know the hooks need to be equally spaced. And so we're going to create a linear pattern under distance to make sure that we keep these the same distance apart. So the rate of change is constant. You can bring that vocabulary in because you're basically using the vocabulary they should already know. Linear, constant rate of change, slope, and so forth. And then here, the same scenario, but we've now omitted the 8. So you can write an equation of a function, actually, and we're going to build towards that, where you use the 8 and you have a domain that fits within this context. And you could talk about restricting the domain is what you're really doing here. Create a function. Let's space these equally, but let them do it. Now, you've got two numbers given, so they're being restricted in how they space them. Do not give them hints. Let them play with it. And then if you can get a kid to explain how to use that 11 and 23, how could you use those numbers to figure out how far apart these are? Some of kids will guess and check, and that's absolutely fine. But if, an, if you discover one of your students has got a strategy that's kind of interesting for figuring that out, that would be great. You could even send them to the boards in their teams and let them battle this one out and show what they're doing and let the other kids see the other team's ideas here. This is a good one to have a conversation about. Now, when you do it, you're going to be able to click here to actually put the pictures on the wall based on what's on the previous screen. Now we're extending it. So I would say you need to get to slide eight for sure, 
because you need to be able to extend it to 10 and follow the same pattern and try it again. And then you're going to extend it again. Now on this one, they're going to do it algebraically. And you'll see what I mean when you do it. They're going to take all this and they're going to use the algebra using an equation that you type. So here it says, enter the values one by one into the middle column. Or you can enter an equation for D in terms of N that give all the distances at, at once. And so here's the power of the algebraic expression. The expression instead of just using numbers and tables. And so the value of the task is here. So I would say got to get to slide 10. If you don't get here, you're kind of missing the point of the assignment. And then here you're going to try the work to see if it works and then do it again. Here's another wall, this time with 15 frames. Try it again with the D and submit. And then at this point, you, you can stop. If you, have, if you get to slide 13 and you're running low on time, you've been allotted one to two days for this. Um, but it just depends on where you are in your grading period. I, put, I gave you all 25 days approximately of work to do during your grading period. And if you're anything like me that's probably going to be tough to to accomplish so you may be running short on time here this is a good place to stop if you can't go any further because you have hit the meat of the assignment and these do continue to just expand just extend this and here's an equation is he correct and here's another distance place the hook new wall so you're practicing this over and over with different walls and again, this is getting into the sequence. So when you get to 17, this is definitely extension. We're going to use this notation when we create sequences later. And then finally, they need to tell the advantage of each approach. Just doing it with your hands, typing numbers into a table, or using the equations. And so they can type up some text here if you get this far. And that concludes your picture perfect activity. The next activity we have is just one problem and it's in GeoGebra. Equivalent lines in slope, intercept, and standard form. And so they're going to drag these numbers into this, these box. And I'm just going to put them in here guys and just know that this is not going to be correct. So let's just do that and check the progress. Now, when they click check progress, it will give the slope of their line. And it will give the y-intercept of their line. And they need to make those match. So both slopes and both y-intercepts should match so that it's the same line. If they don't match, they can click on this right here. And it will go back to the way that it was. And they can try again. Now, the goal here is for them to discover or figure out how these are related. Now, they can type these into Desmos and have this sitting, and there will be kids that do it. They type Y equals something over something, and then they will type them in and see what they're looking like. Uh, but they don't have to. They could just guess and check till they get it. They might get a little frustrated. When they finally get it, and I'm not going to do this right on purpose because I don't want to run this problem. Uh, when they finally get it right and these all match, then they need to take a picture of this. And what you can do is just click the check progress. It'll turn it back on so they can take a picture of both maybe and then put that on their slides. But anyway, that's the last activity. This is not necessarily... Mm, it doesn't have to happen in this lesson. It's kind of a bonus. So if you had to cut, you might cut this one. So this concludes the equations of functions lesson. We have one more lesson after this. It's shorter than this one. And then we have our term exam. And then we will be finished with term number one. If y'all have any questions or suggestions, talk to me on Twitter. Y'all have a great day.